Hey y'all, Crystal here, and I am back to read chapter three of my book that I wrote eight years ago, which at the time, I did not, it was a cry for help for what I was going through, but now I realize it was just the strategy to get me through those dark times or the keys. Woman versus Freedom. Seven Powerful Ways to Identify and Conquer Your Fears is the name of the book. And I'm going to read chapter three fairly quickly. Chapter three is called You Are Worthy. Now, mind you, this was at the time I was writing the way that I was, I was writing the way that I talked. I was writing what I felt. And y'all, I was just going through at the time and didn't realize. So... Um, this was pretty much me encouraging myself. So chapter three, you are worthy. Um, okay, I had to turn a little bit because that mess behind me. But chapter three, you are worthy. And like I said, this is from the book I wrote eight years ago. Y'all, the grammar, the editing, everything. But thank God for growth. This is definitely a testimony for me. So here we go. So remember when I was rambling on about loving yourself in the last chapter? What's stopping you? That's the name of the chapter. Well, both of the topics relate. As you write in your journal about what's stopping you from living a fearless life, which I hope you've started writing immediately, you can begin conquering your fears. Did you ever think that it would be you that is that could, I'm sorry. Did you ever think that it could be you that is stopping yourself? After I finally got over the phase of blaming others for where I was in my life, I realized that I was in my own way. I had experienced as much hurt, rejections, and failure until I didn't know what to do with myself. I felt I wasn't worthy of anything. My soul fed off of all the negativity that I had experienced. It got to the point where I was so depressed and angry until I was disgusted with myself. I disliked everything about myself from my from my point of view. I wasn't beautiful. My body sucked. No one loved or liked me. I truly believe that because I looked at myself that way, I couldn't hold on to any relationships because I was thinking that they disliked me. No one wanted to talk to me. No one wanted to know what I had going for myself which was nothing at the time all because i feel unworthy how could i see myself in a different way i had to put myself through a serious boot camp for self-love i had to learn to embrace every single flaw that i had i needed to love every inch of my body and to realize that i am fearfully and wonderfully made and that i have a man like christ who is and has always been loving me for me he wanted to be my best friend. He always wanted to be there to talk to me. He was interested in me and I kept pushing him away. He had to let me know that it wasn't about how everyone else felt. It was about him, God. Many days I would look for someone else besides God to feel the emptiness in my soul that led to disappointment every single time. All because I was looking for worthiness in all the wrong places. It starts with you. You have to make up in your mind that you are worthy. Refer back to chapter one if you haven't done that yet. Haven't made up your mind. You have to know that you are worthy of your heart's desires, but that's only if your desires align with God's plan for your life. You have to work for what you want while keeping God first. You have to be aware of what you feel and be aware what you are worthy of. Is it the real desires of your heart or are you coveting low-key jealousy? Wrongfully desiring what others have can definitely be a big reason why you may be feeling unworthy. Think about that. Yes, you can have what your heart desires, but is that what you really want? You have to learn to be content. I'm more about that in chapter six. Social media does play a huge part in this, like when you're scrolling through Instagram and admiring the lives of the individuals that seem to have it all together. Yep, that was me. She's pretty. She has all the nice cars and clothes. She spends a lot of money. As you continue to scroll, you begin to say a lot of unworthy things to yourself. Why can't I have that? I could never look like that. I would never be able to do that. But you never say to yourself, why not? 
This is why feeling unworthy and being content can't go together. You are made in God's image and he is the finest <laughs> man I know. <laughs> More on that. Don't look for your worth in your friends and family. Find your worth in Christ and you will find your worth in yourself. Here's the reflection. What is the story I am telling myself about me? How do I take better care of my body and myself? Do I love myself fearlessly? Repeat after me. I am worthy. I believe in myself. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I can have it all. I can achieve it all. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. That's Psalms 139, 14, King James Version. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Matthew 10, 31, King James Version. So, <clears throat> that's chapter three. And, um, y'all, like I said, thank God for growth. Because um, even at this time when I was writing this book, It was like I was writing this for somebody else at the time. I felt like I was writing this for somebody else because even writing this, I did not feel worthy. In the years following this, y'all, I just felt like I wasn't worthy of nothing. Like I had to go through a process for God to really show me that what I was allowing to stop me was not worthy of my life like me dying literally inside and just allowing my life to go away like waste my life like that's what he was showing me like at that time so even me saying some of these things um i was literally dealing with a lot of this stuff so i didn't think i was worthy and it took me a long time to realize that it started with me and I had to begin to change my mindset. Like I was looking for my husband to make me feel worthy. I was looking for my mother and father because the three years following this book, y'all, I ended up, me and my husband and my children, we had to move in with my parents. We lived there with them for three years. And this is the time that I'm talking about that started a refining process. Y'all, when I said I walked into the fire, like I literally walked into the fire when I moved in with my parents for these three years. And I had to be refined. And when you look at me, like you see the beauty from the ashes of that refinement. Um, and I didn't feel like I was worthy of nothing, but it showed me that how, you know, I love my parents. I love my parents, y'all. I love my husband a lot. But it showed me how I was b blaming them for where I was in my life. Because mentally, like, I just did not feel like I was worthy of anything. And I was just waiting for them to validate me and approve me. And I would seek out people to validate me and approve me because I felt like, like I, first of all, my identity in Christ, I did not know like who I really was in him and really wasn't standing firm on my identity. And I'm just now getting to that point. Um, excuse me, I need to drink some water. Um, I, <clears throat> did not know who I was in Christ. And so I was blaming others. Like I said, after I finally got over the phase of blaming others for where I was in my life, y'all, I wasn't over that phase. I realized that I, I was in my own way and I had experienced so much hurt, rejection and failure until I didn't know what to do with myself. And I still dealt with that after writing this book but let me tell you one thing that i've learned from this chapter first of all you have to get in the bible and find scripture to affirm and confirm who you are and who god called you to be i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well it's not going to be easy as you go through this, especially when you've gone through a, a life where you just, you were like, you 
felt like you were worth nothing, like nothing, literally. And so the people in your life, the people that you attracted, they just added to that because you were already thinking that way. What a man thinketh, so is he, right? And I didn't feel worthy of anything. I didn't feel like I was worthy of pursuing my dreams of becoming a writer or recording music or going into the entertainment industry. I didn't, and there was a lot of things even from my teenage years um, that I desired to do after, like during my teen years and after I graduated from high school, but I felt like I wasn't worthy of that stuff. So I was just carrying a lot of things that I wanted to do, but felt like I wasn't worthy of doing. So if I was already thinking that way about myself, you know, how do you think I was going to think about people and how they perceive me if I was already seeing myself in that way? So this is a key when you're going through. You have to know that you are worthy of <clears throat> whatever it is that you're fighting for. You're worthy of it. But there's something I said in this chapter too that... Um, be careful because depending on where you are in your life, what your heart desires at the time may not be what you're worthy of. So in my last chapter that I read, the last video, I was saying like how in my times of discomfort, when I felt discomfort happening in my life or I was, my life was being a little shaken up and I was like, Ooh, uh -uh, I don't want to do that. So let me stop. I would turn to things that gave me comfort, like smoking and drinking and just stuff, you know, I shouldn't have been doing. And that's what was in my heart at the time. So my heart desired to do those things. Um, but ultimately I really desire to not live that life anymore. I really desire to get to a point where I knew that I was worthy enough to not turn back to familiar things. I had to get to the point where I knew that I was worthy of pushing through when familiar things try to come back into my life that bring discomfort or even y'all like me pushing through to become this woman that I desire to be requires me to do new things. It requires me to respond to stress in a different way. It requires me to respond to sh like, it requires me to show up in a different way. So for a long time, I have desired to have a talk show. I have desired to be a blogger. I have desired to just do things that I know would put me in front of people, but I had to take these steps. Like I had to know that, okay, the opinions of my parents, the opinion of my husband does not matter when I'm fighting for pushing through to my heart's desires. And that was to become this woman that God has called me to be. And if I know that I'm a speaker and I'm supposed to be on platforms and I'm supposed to be on a talk show, I can't reach out to people and network and grow if I'm still worried about what they think of me. That's low level stuff, y'all. So just imagine me trying to push through to create this platform and have a talk show and talk to people. I'm going to automatically go to these people and on this platform and present myself as this woman that is worried about the opinions of her parents and her husband. So can you imagine what that'll look like for me? Like I may get as far as, okay, I made it to the talk show, but now because I'm still dealing with some of these things and not realizing how worthy I am of how far I had gotten, I will end up going back to those things. I'll end up sabotaging in some type of way because I'm like, hold on, I'm not worthy of this. Because my parents don't, you know, they don't, they're not telling me that they're proud of me. They're not approving. They're not validating. They're not saying, Crystal, go for it. Or your husband is not saying, girl, you got it. 
in the last chapter, I said, like, these people are not going to understand. Wait, where is it? This one. Oh, in the last chapter, I was like, you know, family, friends, people that are close to you and may know you personally, they're not going to understand. But you have to know that you are worthy of what you're pushing through, too. So when they see you present yourself in a different way that they're not used to, they're going to feel like, wait, hold up, who she thinks she is? And that's when all of the distraction is jibber-jabber is going to come. But you have to have the right mindset and be strong enough to know I'm worthy of this. So what you think you know or what you knew, that's not what I'm worth anymore, okay? So you seeing me in that way, that's not the type of currency that I'm accepting anymore. I'm not that person anymore. No, I can't stand outside and have a conversation with you and smoke anymore. No, I don't want to come and have a drink with you because I'm not that person anymore. I'm not worthy of that stuff anymore. I'm worthy of this over here. I used to think that that was my worth, but it's not anymore. I'm over here. Okay. So, yes. So there's so many scriptures and y'all, I will find some and um, post it to some scriptures to help you um, identify who you are in Christ, what the word says about you, what you really worth. Cause we are, y'all, we priceless, like priceless. And we have to know that as we push through that we are worthy of what we see on the other side. Like we don't have it right now, but what we're see, what we see and what we're going after and pushing through to achieve is what we're worth. And you have to have that constant reminder in front of you or you will find yourself going back to these things that you're no longer no longer worthy of or is not worth your time anymore or worth your peace anymore or worth your um, health anymore. Like, this was me. So even when I was writing this book, like, because I was going through so much stuff mentally, my physical health was taking a toll on me. Um, it's just so much that was coming along with that. But that's chapter three. <clears throat> Y'all, I have talked so much. My throat's hurting. <laughs> um, but know that you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. And I encourage you to go follow Fearless Money, Inc., um, Fearless Money, Inc. is an organization that helps wives um, overcome these things that I was going through at the time and discussing in this book. And to give accountability and know that you're not by yourself and you don't have to go through the process by yourself. You can't skip steps, but you can't go through this process by yourself. You don't have to. Um, so Fearless Money Inc. is definitely an organization to do that. And I'm the founder of it. And just, I want to provide tools and resources to help wives get through this. Because when we're in a broken place, we can't show up how we need to as a wife. And we definitely can't show up how we need to as a mom and just the woman, the pillar of the household. Like, we need mom and dad. We need wife and husband. We need, the house needs me as the woman the matriarch to show up whole so healing from these things is crucial getting through these things is crucial because it has a long-term effect on the family so follow fearless money inc on instagram i'm all talked out y'all so i'll be back with chapter four of my book and you can go grab this on um if you go to my instagram or i may have the link posted in the description on my website crystalclayton.com and i will have the book this copy of it posted here my plan is to rewrite this book um and just share my testimony and how far i've come how much i've evolved thank god for growth um so i'll have a new version of this book or a, a new just testimony period about you know how far i've come from this book but this copy is available just as it is y'all when i wrote it i'm out